All right, what's going on everyone? So today I wanted to tell you about what it's like to be a new grad PA in the emergency department. So we'll start off with what is a PA? Uh, a PA, it's not a doctor and it's not a nurse. It's an advanced practice provider. So it's a mid-level provider position where you're still able to you know, see patients, diagnose them, do a history and physical, order labs, imaging, order medications. You can also do some procedures, like I do a lot of suturing. I don't know why you're licking the table. Uh, this is my dog, Nora. Say hello, Nora Dougie. Yeah, so that's basically what a PA is. It's kind of like a nurse practitioner, if you know what a nurse practitioner is. Those people seem to know what those are more often. I find myself repeating what a PA is several times during a shift because patients just don't know. They'll be like, who are you? What are you doing? you know, or they'll think that you're their nurse. So another thing I want to talk about is networking. Networking is a big reason why I got this job. When I was in school and I was on rotations, I had this emergency department rotation where me and the doc, we got along really good. I think he saw that I also liked working in the emergency department. So he played a big role in me getting a job at the place I'm at currently because he used to work there and he knows people there. He messaged them, I was able to get into contact with them, and then I set up like a day to come shadow, what it'll be like. I really enjoyed everyone. I thought everyone's personality meshed really well with mine. Then that day, that afternoon, or maybe the next day, uh, they sent me an offer, offer letter, so I signed it immediately. Uh, after I, you know, looked it over, made sure everything looked good, but that was a really exciting day. So networking is very important, because you never know who you'll meet and how they could help you in your future or help them in the future like a pay it forward thing you know moving on i've been in the emergency department for about four months a little over four months but prior to that the very first month was dedicated to orientation okay orienting yourself to the new environment it's very overwhelming in the beginning because you have to learn everything uh you have to relearn an entire emr system so electronic medical record you have to learn names of everyone so you work with a bunch of different people in the emergency department nurses on every different shift. The mid-levels I learned pretty fast because I work with those people the most. The docs, easy to learn their name because there's only one per shift and I get to see who I'm working with on the scheduling app, which is very convenient. So along with learning the EMR and everyone's name, you also have to learn where everything is. So we have like our own suture cart. So a bunch of different drawers. I still pretty much open up every single one to find the specific thing I'm looking for. And then the cabinets are filled with a bunch of different things. And then there's an entire supply closet which is filled with stuff. Everything's labeled, but there's so much stuff, it's very overwhelming. So I end up having to look through every single thing until I come across the one thing that I actually need. But yeah, so orientation. First day was meant, you know, to follow around and just get the flow of things, how things work, how they see people and then I had to put in orders and stuff like that. And it is a little bit different than on rotations, like more pressure. At least I felt like it was more pressure because now you don't have like the, the reassurance of, okay, I, I go see this person and then I present to my preceptor and then, then they say, that's right, or that's what I would do, or no, that's completely wrong, you're an idiot. I don't think anyone actually called me an idiot, but they probably thought it a lot because now you're the provider and you're going in to see these people and you're responsible for taking care of them. So you just have all this added pressure of you want to do everything right. So yeah, for my first day, I think I saw two or three people. I was very nervous and I was very, very slow at first of like doing notes. Like it, it took me so long to complete an entire note because I was like learning how to click through things. Uh, then you'll find like shortcuts, how to do things. You'll be able to add your own insert commands. So you can put like an entire exam and then just tinker with it, with what you found on that exam of that person. So another big thing in the emergency department is time management because you're taking care of several patients at a time. You have things to sign. You're looking out for results. And then you're also you're picking up new people constantly. Uh, you're trying to make phone calls to either get a person admitted or transferred, calling CT or X-ray, see what's taking so long. Or you got nurses coming to you saying that the patient wants this or this, or can we get something for their pain or nausea or something like that. So all these moving parts, uh, you're trying to stay focused so you don't miss anything and you're trying to have good time management so you're not staying two hours later to finish your note. One of the other mid-levels gave me this uh, idea that they do is that they take this grid paper, it's like five by four squares on, on a piece of paper 
I just write the, the room number, the patient's age, male, female, and their chief complaint. I don't write any personal identifying stuff on there. So if I were to like lose it or someone picked it up, they wouldn't be able to get anyone's like information to know that this person was at the emergency department because HIPAA. But yeah, the, that grid paper, uh, I do one line when I discharge them or admit them, and then I complete the X for when I complete that note. It helps me stay on track of what notes I still need to complete. And then recently I'll put like a plus in the box just so I know I started that note at least because at the end of your shift you don't want to have like seven notes that you didn't even start yet. I also still write my old charts and some other history things. I pass medical history, medications, allergies, and surgeries on another piece of paper and with the room number and the age and female and all that chief complaint. Same thing. No no identifying uh, information on there. Just something I can look back because I don't want to completely rely on my memory to complete those notes because it does get really busy and you don't always have time to come back and do the note. At least for me. Uh, the docs and the other mid-levels that have been doing this for years and years, they're pretty advanced. They don't write any notes. They'll see like five people and they'll come by. They'll bang out that note so fast. I'm pretty jealous, actually. Uh, I hope I get there soon. So on orientation and onward, probably for the rest of my career, it's very nice to always be able to ask questions. So the mid-levels, because I, you know, I bounce ideas off of them all the time. But they're very nice to oblige me. But you, are, you do get better at uh, doing like a really quick like 10, 15 second rundown of like why that patient's there and what's going on with them and then get to your question real quick because you don't want to take too much of their time. Uh, I've improved a lot on that in the docs. They're obviously very knowledgeable. They're a doctor. The people that work there, they've been doing it for like 20 years. And it's always nice to ask them questions because then you also learn something new. I feel like I learn something new every single day. All right, so moving on to the schedule. The schedule is very nice. Before I even got a job, I had my like mind of no-goes, like that I was not going to do at a job because I know how I am personally. Because on my very first emergency department rotation, I had two. Uh, the one, well, I guess both. Yeah, both, but the second one wasn't that bad because I liked it a lot. But the first one, that the scheduling was terrible. And I also had an hour commute there and back, but those were like 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and then 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. But it, it would be 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. one day, and then you might have a day off, and then 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and then they would just keep on going back and forth, and I can't operate like that because I already can't sleep. And when I come home... <laughs> at like 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. I don't want to go to sleep and at 7 a.m. like the, the day's getting started it's light out. So that that scheduling does not work for me. But at the place I'm at now it's great. It's fantastic. I couldn't ask for a better schedule. It uh, It's either 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. or noon to midnight. And if you're working the 10 to 10 then you'll have another advanced practice provider working the other one. So 12 to 12. So just to give the doc support you know. They don't really have uh, mid-levels staying like overnight so like how i was saying how we did on the rotations like we would follow docs around so we were doing their schedule of uh, 7 p.m to 7 a.m they don't they're not that busy so they don't really need another person there in the emergency department in my contract i signed to work a certain amount of hours a year so that comes out to about 12 shifts a month so that's very nice you only have to work 12 shifts a month at minimum and then for like requesting days off we have a thing where you can request days you want off in advance like a month in advance but if something were to come up like during the month that you're working like if something were to happen first you see if someone will want to change the shift with you so then you don't have to miss an entire day or they'll have like a per diem person come in to cover that shift or they'll have another doc come in but like i was saying with working uh 12 days so once you work your minimum hours anything over that i just get paid the hourly rate i can talk about pay in the, at a different time so we covered what a pa is how important networking is how orientation was and getting yourself oriented and learning all the new things. Uh, we learned how scheduling is, it's great. Now I wanna talk about stress because working in the emergency department is very stressful, okay? Me personally, I have like this overwhelming fear of, oh my God, am I gonna be able to sleep at night now? Or like I'll have a hard time sleeping because I'll be running through every single thing I did. Like, oh my gosh, should I have done this? Or should I have done that? It could be very, very stressful. So having a good support system, like I do. I have my fiance, I also have my dog. My fiance, I'm able to talk to her and go through things that are going on in my head and that relieves my stress and also picking up a hobby like fishing. I love fishing, but in Pennsylvania right now it's 30 degrees and there's like a thin layer of ice over all the water. So fishing is out of the question. So I am left with just talking about my feelings. So that about covers what I wanted to cover. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down. Other than that, have a good one.